option traders. This is Jeff. Video one on the daily straddle using weeklies on Apple. Um, we're going to go back and on this uh, first video, we're going to go take a look at um, a couple of different straddles. One is on the actual expiration day, and then we'll compare that to one that's a week away on expiration. And uh, we'll play around with them a little bit, uh, and I'll show you the difference between the two because it's pretty interesting. And, you know, previous to this, I was not all that much of a guru on straddles. I don't claim to be a guru now because I'm learning. I'm learning a lot, and I'm really liking what I'm learning. I'm still trying to prove this to myself that it doesn't really work this good. I've had some dialogue with a couple of readers of the blog that they kind of agree that it does work that good. Um, they've been doing some back testing themselves and uh, seem to be pretty pleased about it. So I think that that's pretty cool. And I like to hear from people um, that that can sort of like sort of like finding the God particle, you know, if you can have your research verified independently, that always makes it feel a little bit better and, and you feel a little bit more sure that um, that what you've discovered, quote unquote, is for real. So um, we want to go into, pa into the past, but I want to pick a day for Apple that um, that is uh, typical, I guess you might say, for the trading range for the day. So we will go back to this current chart here of Apple, and we can probably, I want to pick one of these days. Gapping and stuff like that, all that doesn't matter. It's, it's where it moves from the open. Let's zoom in here a little bit, and I think the 29th here would be a good day to pick. Um, any one of these days, any one of these uh, candles that looks, that has a body similar to this one from open to close, and this is what, 77 to 84, so that's like 7 bucks. It's not a big move for Apple. So, um, and you can see that it's not a big move. I mean, it's almost pretty typical. And some of these long wicks, if you do limit orders and you say, I'm going to exit after I make a couple hundred bucks, you can make money on these wicks too. I'll explain that in future videos. But this one, I just want to uh, get everybody familiar with the straddle and uh, picking your expiration time. All right, so we're going to the 29th. Let's go to the 29th. Click on demand. And we want to go to the 29th, and we want to go to 9 o'clock in the morning, 0936. That looks pretty good. So while this is buffering, I will pause. All right, here we are, uh, 937. The clock is ticking, sort of. Right. Seems kind of choppy. But uh, we're going to pause it anyway, so I'm going to hit the pause button here. Uh, and I need to pause it just so I can explain a few things. All right, so um, if we were to throw on a stock price is 575.60, so we'll throw on a 575 straddle. And we want to, we're going to compare it to the July 1, 575 straddle. I'll just show you a few different things here in this video. Okay, so I want to lock these prices because we're going to move around in time a little bit for the day and see how things work out. So popping over to the risk profile, I'll uncheck the July 1, and we'll take a look at the June 5. All right, so um, June 5, $3.62, maximum risk $362 on this particular trade. And this gap in here, because this expires this afternoon, or actually, I guess technically it's Saturday morning, but you can't trade it anymore um, after 4 o'clock or 4.05, I think. Um, this gap represents your maximum loss, and it also your maximum loss is 
time decay. So um, what we're looking at here is we need some movement in this stock to get it off of this center line here basically and get it away from this max loss area. And we have a day to do it. Well, we have, you know, like six hours to do it. Okay, so making sure we're okay here by when you're in on demand, you almost constantly have to click the reset parameters. All right, I wanted to put break even slices in here. And look at the break even, how close they are together at this current time, um, which is at 9.37 in the morning. Break evens are very close together. And all we need is a $5 move in the stock to make a decent amount of change. So this is uh, 574.34. So if we made this 579.34, 579.34, and this is 575, so this is 570.64. And um, based on the current time, you would make $152 or $151, $152, no matter which direction this stock moved, if it decided to move $5 off of the, this current price. I want to add another, um, I'm going to add a live slice here. Okay, that says live, so that's the current price. All right, so... Um, the break-evens were about five bucks off, right? Or I mean, uh, fifty cents off of the current price, approximately. So let's take a look at the straddle that's going to expire a week from today. Let's squeeze it up here a little bit, make sure we're good here. All right. So now, if it moves five dollars today. Basically, it's a 56 or $47 gain based on the information that we have down here. So you can see that you're paying more for it, and your risk is, uh, is higher, and your chances are actually lower. Uh, but that's, only, that's if you hold it for a day. If you hold it for two days, chances are if it continues in the current direction that you're going to make a boku amount of money off of it which I could show you quickly uh, in a minute all right so um, that's where we are you can uh, check these out yourself um, you have more time here your time here is a week so your risk is greater but um, you have a week for it to do something Now let's jump to approximately 3.30 this afternoon. Now let's see how these look. I'm going to pause while we're waiting for it. Okay. We're in, now we're looking at the June 5th one. And we'll make sure that we reset parameters. Okay, now the live price is 582, which is up here. So this trade is currently at a $364 gain. Want to look at the chart? We can look at the chart. So it gapped up in the morning. Um, the trading range was, uh, it actually uh, pulled back a little bit, and that's this first, very first candle at the open over here on this 30-minute chart. So it did pull down a little bit, but then it still came up, and it looks like... Uh, Looks like it wants to finish pretty high, although it's pulling back just a little bit right now. All right, so um, if you were to go by a rule or anything like that, you would say that at 3.30 I'm going to check this and I'm going to get out at 3.30. Our max loss at 3.30 would be $200, $247, this low point right here, if it did not move at all today. But again, like I said, we could use uh, stop loss and limit orders to um, have this as an unattended trade during the day. 
and again I'm going to show you that in another video. Let's take a peek at the July 1 and you can see that it's at $54. Um, so you're going to make less, you're risking more, and you're going to make less on this short dura duration trade. Uh, but that's not a reason not to get into this. However, on a Friday, I would not advise, uh, if you want to hold this overnight, I would not advise holding it over a weekend because remember how I said the space in here is all time value. And over the weekend, this, this is going to dip down. And, I, and I'll, I'll show you that by uh, swinging out into uh, next week on Monday. And Monday is, um, is July the 2nd, which is um, two days before the 4th of July here. Trading is light, but Apple is still moving. Apple's still trading. So let's go and take a look at that. See how it would look on July 2nd this one, even with holding it over the weekend, again, I wouldn't do that, and we'll go to 9.37, and we'll hit go, and I'll pause while it's uh, buffering. Okay, so here we are Monday morning at 9.37, and we are still paused. Our trade is at 82, it's at up like $20 or something like that, even though Apple again gapped, why are you doing this to me? gapped up here um, but let's see what happens as the day wears on if you were to hold this one uh, let's go to the afternoon and I will pause this while it buffers all right everything's loaded and uh, we are sitting at six hundred and seventy dollars gain on this particular trade because the stock moved up uh, another five bucks I think and it's only a 1.26 percent move which is um, pretty typical of Apple for you know a day it's on it's more unusual for it not to move that much to move like a half a percent or less it's more typical for it to move a percent or more so this was a, a good thing, uh, even with holding it over the weekend, which I, again, would not advise doing, but holding it over the weekend, it made a nice chunk of change if you were to get out at this time. All right, so um, that's it. Uh, we'll be making some more videos of showing some on-demand uh, trades and how you can set up uh, one cancel other orders to have it be unmanaged during the day and uh, and then probably like another video to uh, talk about the rules various different kinds of rules that you may want I'm not sure how many videos I'm going to end up with I don't want to make them too long so um, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope this is getting the, the thinking juices going in your head like they started to go in my head when I just kind of accidentally stumbled on this. I don't know how many other people are doing something like this, but this is just like a beautiful thing. So we'll show you. Um, I want everybody to do this. I mean, there's no reason, no reason why uh, everybody can't do this, actually. As long as somebody keeps buying or selling Apple stock, that's all that matters. All right. So again, uh, thanks for watching, and um, we'll talk to you soon.